start with him.
The thing about Green Hills is that the school was great. I say school because when we grew up here, right over there, what we called the community building or the white building was our school, kindergarten through 12. Did you know that it really actually wasn't white all the time? It was gray. It was gray for a period of time. Uh, I got a lot of did you knows here. <laughs> Did you know that there's a ghost in the school, in the, in the community building? <coughs> Absolutely. Who is it? I don't know who it is, but I have a pretty good idea who it is. I'm not going to say. Um, we have really wonderful, dedicated teachers. And as the other mayors will find out and have found out in the case, Every year they have a Hall of Fame, and every year the Hall of Fame picks some graduates of the school system here. And when you see what these, these individuals have accomplished through the years, graduating from that little building over there, well, that's not so little, that big building over there, is unbelievable. It's just unbelievable what we have, what we have, what we have really grown in this town. On Sundays, we used that building for church. Both the Presbyterian and the Catholic Church had services in there, in the gym. And they would change whatever they needed between the services. Sunday afternoons, for most of the year, we had movies in the gym. Uh, if you look in the, go back in the gym and look up above the old band room and the uh, old music room, you'll see the music thing. We had Hopalong Cassidy, we had Gene Audrey and Roy Rogers, who was a Cincinnati boy. We had all these great movies in there, and we had serials, so you would have to come back the next week to find out what happened when the, when the great Lone Ranger or something fell off the silver. So, uh, it was good times. But the reason we had such good times is because we were this little island out here in the middle of nowhere. My relatives would come out here and they said, oh my God, where are we going, you know? We were this little island surrounded by woods. There was no Witten Woods, there was no lake. There was Mill Creek going through there, but that was it. And it went right under where the bridge is now was the channel. So we had a lot of fun in the woods. We used to go down in the woods and hike. I remember one time we got lost because those older people here will remember that you went out to play in the morning and you had to come home when the street lights came on. So uh, we, were, we didn't get home when the street lights came home came on. We were over by where Beachwood School is now, which was the Beachwood Picnic Grove, and down in the Witten Woods, and we got lost, and we didn't know where the heck we were, so we, uh, we, we, they sent the police after us, and that's another whole story of the police. But uh, another thing we did is that we, we went into the woods, and we cut vines. There were vines on all these big beech trees and that, and we cut those, and we swung on those vines. I, we, I, if I my grandkids tried that, I'd I kill them, because <laughs> we almost got killed. But we would go down there in our loincloths and swing on the vine, and we went, oh! We all were Tarzan. We didn't have any canes with us, but we all were Tarzan. It was a good, it was a good time. Uh, uh-oh, uh my beaver's going on. <laughs> the one thing we had is we, had, we didn't have much else to do, so we invented things, but we did have great recreation. We had football, basketball, and baseball. There was no soccer, there was nothing else. Well, there was a swimming pool, I'll talk about it in a bit. But we had these great, great things. And it wasn't one of these things where everybody made the team. We had maybe two teams for class. And you had to make the team. And the part about making the team was that um, you really felt part of that team. And we had great coaches. Frank Mangano, I can remember some of mine. Mr. Mangano, Mr. Frank Mangano lived down in Brompton. I had Mr. Borton lived up on DeWitt. I had Curly Ernst lived on Brompton. He was a minor league player for the Brooklyn Dodgers. And across the street was the man's. And their uncle was Pee Wee Reese from the Dodgers. Anybody that saw 42, Pee Wee Reese was mentioned prominently in that. And Pee Wee Reese would come out to Green Hills when he came to Crosley Field, and he would play pepper with us over in Big Burley Park, as we called it back then. Um, so we had, we had a lot of extra fun doing that. Um, but some of the other coaches we had in football were Frank and Charlie Chicardo. They lived, they lived down, Frank lived down on Funston. 
And of course, Mike Palma. You gotta mention Mike Palma. Mike was the recreation director. Mike did everything. Mike distributed uniforms. Mike, Mike, he, bless him, he was an umpire. And I was a catcher. And Mike chewed tobacco. And Mike had his thing, his jaw was out like that. And he chewed tobacco, and he would go, Why? And I come home, and my mom says, What's all over the back of you? There's all this stuff all over the back of me, all over me. And it's a true story. And then, back then, there was no air conditioning in cars, and Mike was also the transportation for us guys. He would stuff all of us kids in his car and go to Finneytown or College Hill or when we were in the city tournament downtown. Well, that was a big deal. But us kids had been with Rowney for a while. We were smart. We never got in the seat behind the driver <laughs> <laughs> because it would be hot and everybody had the windows down and we'd put the new guy in there. The bike would be driving like, and it would come back in. <laughs> so this was growing up in Green Hills. You know? <laughs> Oh, my gosh. It was a good time. I'm trying to think of what I, I put a bunch of bullets out here. Oh, my five minutes is over. Okay, good. I quit. He's got two bullets. I'll tell you what. We had the first major league ball player from Green Hills was Maurice Fisher. Uh, him and, and Churchill were the big, big Big, two big guys on the basketball team, but Maury was a pretty good pitcher too. And the Red signing, and he became the first major league pitcher from Green Hills. Now his brother Wendell still lives here on Day Hill, Day, uh, Deer Hill. And uh, you know, and, and Maury was elected to the Hall of Fame a few years ago, but uh, he's not around. I think he's still alive, but he's not around town anymore. But uh, he was everybody's idol, everybody's idol at all. Um, one of the things we did, I see Larry Zettler over here. He'll remember this. We, 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 we used to be, build our own basketball courts in goals. And we used the old garage compounds for these goals. And we would put the goals up on top of a garage. And we, we always saw somebody that we knew, and we'd lift the garage door, and that way we wouldn't crash into them when we went in for a you know, quick layup or something. <laughs> but we had built the, the best one that was ever built, I think, in my estimation, was called the Falcon Gardens. And that, that was at the end of the Falcon Garage Compound, where number 11 Falcon is now. But that was the Garage Compound, and we, and I think it was Zoller, Ronnie Zoller, I think probably built that. Maybe the settler was with him. They built this really nice, yeah, maybe one of the Connor boys. And if, we, had, we had a big F in the middle of that, and, and uh, that don't sound too good, does it? But anyway, <laughs> anyway we, uh, we had the Falcon Gardens, and we played basketball there. We played basketball if it was snowing, we played basketball if it was raining, we played basketball no matter what. But when it got out like this today, we couldn't get in there when we sneak in the gym over here. Everybody knew how to sneak in there, but once you snuck in and you bounced the ball a few times, either, the, either one of the janitors, and there was like three of them only, they would come running or Johnny Baldwin would show up. And he was, he was a policeman then, one of the greatest police chiefs we ever had. That's another story, but we would get kicked out of there, and then we'd, what are we going to do now, you know? So um, it, was, it was just a great time growing up. Uh, one of the fun things is that we did, we played tackle football. You can see I'm really into sports, but we played tackle football. And we hit A block against B block, and we hit C block against A block, and we hit, we hit C against D. But the neatest thing we did is we played the farm boys where Forest Park is now. This was Lee Weber and Johnny Burks and all my buddies. They lived on the farms so and we they want to play us football. So we'd go up there and play tackle football in the farms. And we get to the farms there and we play tackle football. Of course their football field is not like our field of dreams behind our house on Chalmers, which is now Palmer Park. Their football's a cow pasture. <laughs> so we're in a cow pasture, we're playing tackle football. Of course, we have to walk up there because nobody had cars. And we walk back home, well, we'd come back home and all of our parents would make a strip on the porch, you know, because we were full of cow manure. But those are days you never forget. Those are, I mean, this, this is the way it was. You did things, you had fun all day long.
along, and then at night you played catchers or kick the can or something, and you know until until the cops came and ran you away. I'm talking about the cops. You know that common out there? That's sacred ground when we grew up. If you were coming from Chalmers in the swimming pool, you didn't dare cut through the commons because the police department was right. Is that old picture there? I love that old picture. Was right next to the library where the beauty shop and that open place. That was the police and fire department, so they could see you. So when you tried to go across the commons, John Bulldog Newkirk, he would come out and he was a chief for a while. He was he was scary. And he was scary. And he would come out, they would run you off there. They'd arrest you. They'd put you in the jail down under the shopping center there. That's what <laughs> they threatened us. They threatened us. They threatened us with that. But yeah, it was a good time. But the one thing about John Bulldog Newkirk, and probably maybe Bill will remember this, every year in the summer he took the kids, the children that wanted to go fishing, fishing down in Mill Creek. We all walked down there with our pools, and we went down and fished. Never caught anything, but uh, I don't think there was any fish in there. That thing may have been, that, that may have been poisoned then, even. <laughs> but uh, we did that, and, and you got to bless him. He was a great guy. You know, he looked like a bulldog, and he was mean as a bulldog. But he was, he, you know, one thing about our police in this town is that they were dedicated, and we all respected them, and. I wish that more of the youth now respected the police and, and the adults the way we did as kids. And we learned that from our parents, and that was a great way to, to grow up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut off quick here because Fred looks like he wants to talk. Hell, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry, Doc. <laughs> Let me just mention a few other things. Uh, uh, I got some notes here, but. You know, the thing about Green Hills is that it's, it's really a, it's just, it's just was the greatest place in the world. Um, so what I want to do with Green Hills, and I'm sure everybody here wants to do, is maintain the legacy, maintain the dreams, as Flag say. Live the dream and continue the dream so that our kids and our grandkids can enjoy what we all did growing up. And uh, you know, it's it's a challenge now, but there's so many there's so many obstacles for the young people. But you know, we overcame obstacles. We overcame big obstacles. Our parents weren't rich. Everybody in this town was poor. That's why we were out here. But we we did the best, and the best some of the best came out of here. And so, I my my dream is that, that after we're all gone. To have this town maintain the way it was and continue the dream. And all I can say is God bless Green Hills and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Woods, there was a archery golf course, and Jim Blackburn, who was a former Reds pitcher, was the the archery golf pro. And actually, I, I actually worked up there. And you would set these big targets up, and they had they had uh, target shoot, straight target shoot archery, and then they had archery golf down in the in the woods there. And it was really neat. And uh, actually, Nancy Vonderheit, Vonder whatever her name was, won this gold medal in archery, used to shoot there. Right, and Daryl Pace as well. Yep, Daryl Pace, that's right. The only two-time gold medal winner. Thank you very much. That was great. A couple things. I'd just like to recognize that we have a couple of visitors from the Wake Woods Board of Education, Dr. Viola Johnson. Fred has uh, served on the council for and, and as mayor for nine years. He was vice mayor for six years. You can correct any of this as you come up with Fred. <laughs> and uh, our, our recent mayor of four years. Fred Murrow? Yes. Thank you all. Uh, 
Yeah, I guess Jeff got the bio stuff pretty close to right. I was on council for just about 10 years, uh, you know, nine years and almost. Three quarters. In the three quarters, there you go, thereabouts. And I uh, was mayor for the last four years. I knew it was gonna be tough to follow Oscar Hoffman as mayor, and certainly gonna be tough to follow him as a speaker. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of funny stories uh, to tell, but Jeff basically asked me, he's like, tell everybody why you love Green Hill. And it's pretty, you know, it's a little complicated, but we'll start with this. I came here, my mom and dad and moved, built a house on Conga Street in 1961. So I came here, I was five years old, we came from Virginia. I didn't know anything about anything. Uh, but we come to this place, and, you know, I love Green Hills because it was under construction, at least at that point. It's a great place for kids to run around. You could find a little bits of two by fours and things, and you, you could hammer things in the garage. And there are a lot of places to explore. Uh, when they built the high school, uh, and when they dug all the, uh, the footers for the high school, I remember running around up in that thing, just jumping over these ditches. It was great, lots of fun. But as Aki pointed out, it was a wide open place for kids to get out and explore. And that's one of the reasons I love Green Hills. And that stands true today. Even, uh, you know, even as, as recent as last night, my 16-year-old and a couple of his friends said, well, we're gonna go down to the woods and explore. And, you know, it's a full moon out, so they could go out and wander around in the woods behind the house, uh, much as we could. God only knows what they're doing back there, but I'm hoping it was that what they wouldn't mind seeing on the, the front page of the New York Times. But, but nevertheless, uh, you know, my, my kids have always enjoyed the ability to go down and explore here in Green Hills. And that's one of the things I love about this town. I, I love the fact that we are surrounded by this green belt. That this place hasn't just metastasized into some giant mess of retail and foolishness like you see on Corian Avenue. We're still a community. We still identify as a community. And that's a great thing. And that's one of the reasons I love Green House. I love driving down Hadley in the spring and in the fall. In the spring, all those pear trees are blooming. And you have this beautiful canopy of white blossoms. Now, they don't smell great. <laughs> but they are beautiful. And then when you turn around in the fall and drive down there, it can be overcast, it can be almost dusk, but those bright yellow leaves make it seem like it's daylight outside. It's just those little things that I, I see and just, gosh, that's one of the reasons I love Green House. And it's mostly because of the folks that are in this room, and the folks like you that aren't here. I can look around this room and see folks who have dedicated their lives to Green Hills, in the case of our current mayor, spending 34 years as the, uh, as the manager. I see Mrs. Brokaw, who was our finance director for many years, and who could have left for a lot more money a whole lot of times. Kathy was that good. She was high in demand. But no, she loved Green Hills. She felt the dedication to this community and she stayed here. There are coaches, there are volunteers. I mean, Mr. Johnstone was a, uh, a volunteer at OLR uh, with uh, you know, the youth groups and stuff years ago. And you know, Mr. Lee, we spent a lot of years on the school board. We've had current school board members. We have Bobby Googley, who uh, is, is a big force in the Alumni Association. We've got Mr. and Mrs. Tilton. My goodness, the youth golf program here at, at, at the golf course was, was their baby. And they just made a great thing out of it. They've dedicated a lot of their lives to this town. So it's you all. It's you all who is the reason I love Green Hills. And since I'm standing between Dave and you all eating dinner, I'm going to leave it at that. So, thanks for getting me to dinner.
Well, and also he, he uh, took my intro today uh, away from me, but that's fine. No, it's, um, as you can see on your program, that uh, he's been an administrator, which turned into manager uh, for 28 years, um, and mayor for 45 days, 70, right now I'm waiting 18 hours, I should say. Um, but if you could please welcome our current mayor, Dave Moore. that I probably was uh, planning on saying, and uh, and I'm not quite the uh, speaker those two guys are. Actually, I've already talked to Fred about uh, doing some speeches for me, uh, like for Memorial Day. <laughs> Since I'm not really the politician kind of person, I always uh, was in the sort of the background as the administrator. And, and of course, my speech should be short because I've only been here 45 days. <laughs> 17 and a half hours. <laughs> but uh, uh, Jeff asked me to talk a little bit about what I see uh, uh, vision of Green Hills in the future. And uh, really, that it's uh, sort of what Aki talked about. That uh, you know, my vision is to try to keep this as a, uh, a small town, uh, as a, um, a close knit community um, with. Uh, a lot of people who uh, work together, try to accomplish things. And, you know, we have a lot of issues that uh, we have to work on in this community, but uh, you know, when they started the, the first pioneers in the Green Hills in 38, they had a lot of issues and a lot of things that they had to work on and uh, overcome. And, uh, and so I think the community has done a pretty good job over the years of tackling a lot of issues. Uh, and we know uh, we know what some of those issues are, and some new ones will crop up. And so, by the end of my term, you know, I'd like to see us have a, a reinvigorated uh, shopping center and uh, a few more jobs. So, uh, I'd like to see Mobilecom get another building over there, so we can get more uh, uh, workers in town. Workers in town can come and eat new restaurants, the butt shack, or uh, anything else that might develop uh, in town. Uh, you know, things like that to make it vibrant. Uh, we need to uh, keep the community up uh, with uh, our housing stock, try to encourage uh, new families to move into the community. Um, you know, uh, we, all of us who have lived here all these years know the jewel that we have. Uh, and uh, as people die off uh, uh, and their houses become available, uh, you know, the value of the housing in Green Hills is a, a, a good affordable price uh, for somebody uh, new to come into town and, uh, and experience what we experience. And it's generally you know, a nice, quiet, safe community. Uh, and when I first moved here um, back in 72, uh, prior to moving into the community, I'd come over here a few times to eat and do some things, and I really liked it. But after I lived here for a while, when I'd come home from work, it was like coming back uh, into a relaxing area. And it was mainly like driving through the woods to get here. And, uh, you know, we were like a small farming community out in the middle of the Midwest somewhere. You know, not like part of the metropolis. To, just a, a nice little community with plenty of sidewalks for kids and people to walk on and play on and a safe community and we're still a safe community you know, knock on wood uh, we've got great parks and, uh, and if you like to go out into the woods uh, like Fred's kids you can go hiking at any time uh, our kids uh, one of our sons uh, lived in Whitten Woods half the time uh, down in the creek and places like that so it's really a great community, and uh, I plan to do as much as I can do uh, uh, during my tenure, uh, uh, promoting the community and uh, keeping it as a great little place to grow up in. 